हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज सत्य प्रकाश वेलकम टू माय चैनल दिस इज पार्ट फोर ऑफ एस वी डॉट नेट कोर इन दिस वीडियो आई विल डिस्कस एंड एक्सप्लोर टू अंडरस्टैंड द एस वी डॉट नेट कोर प्रोजेक्ट फाइल्स सो इन दिस वीडियो विल डिस्कस व्हाट आर द कंपैरिजन बिटवीन एस वी डॉट नेट एंड एस वी डॉट नेट कोर प्रोजेक्ट फाइल डॉट एंड फ्रेमवर्क एंड डॉट नेट कोर एब्रीविएशन and know about different section of .cs pros file because it it is the c# sharp project all right so guys um what is the comparison between the sp.net and sp.net core project file so before going through this video uh, i'll suggest you please visit my part 2 of sp.net core tutorial so i'll show you that this is the uh, playlist you can find out in my channel that is dot net core playlist if you go there you will get the three uh, part three video how to build sp dot net core web application using visual studio so before this part four please visit my part three of sp dot net core tutorial for better understanding the process all right so guys uh, so these are the these are the points we need to discuss in this comparison between sp.net and sp.net core project file in my previous video i already have shown you how to create a empty .net core project it is a user management all right so this is the project structure of this empty sp.net core project file so first of all we need to discuss the project file does not contain any folder or file reference all right so guys uh, in my in previous version of sp.net when we add a file or folder to the project file using solution explorer a reference to the to that file or folder is included in the project file all right so how to get this project file just right click on this user management and click on edit user management.cs proj okay and you will get this project file So basically, this .cs proj will contain some reference to that file or folder is included in the project file in the previous version of sp.net. But in sp.net core, this project file does not contain any folder or file reference. All right. So this is the point describes the how what the difference between sp.net and sp.net core. All right. Next point is the file system determines what files and folders. belong to the project so all files and folder that are present in the project root folder are part of the project and it will be displayed under the solution all right this is called a solution explorer so similarly when you delete a file or folder from the project folder or or any of its subfolders that deleted file or folder is no longer part of project and that the fact is immediately reflected in the solution explorer so in previous version of sp.net all right if you uh, for example this uh, project path is if you go to right click on this and go to uh, open folder in file explorer it will it will come with the path of this project right so for example in the sp.net project if you add any new files it will not directly reflect to the the solution if that is if that is the sp.net project but in sp.net core project if you uh, i'll show you if you you know uh, simultaneously open this is the solution explorer and this is the path of sp.net core project user management so if you uh, click uh, create any new uh, uh, file that is text uh, text document and if you notice here you can see that file is immediately reflect in the solution explorer of dotnet core project sp dotnet core project all right so that is the benefit of sp dotnet core that file system determines what files and folder belonging to the project and if you delete this folder if it is not part of this solution and you can see that immediately reflect in the dotnet sp.net core solution explorer that file is also deleted right and if you compare with the dot sp.net project the previous version if you click if you create any sp.net uh, 
project folder for example note note in a text box sorry text document it will not re immediately reflect in asp.net solution explorer but in asp.net core it will immediately reflect what i show you now all right so that describes the point two point three is edit the project file without you know unloading the project so guys the same way we work this file has changed uh, that dot dot cs pros in previous version of sp.net to be able to edit the project file we first we first have to unload the project all right uh, you can see there is unload we need to unload the project in previous version of sp.net all right and then edit and save the project file and then reload the project okay uh, but in sp.net core we can edit the project file without unloading the project so this point defines what are the difference between sp.net and sp.net core and that is the edit the project file without unloading the project in sp.net core last point is dot cs proj and dot bb proj extensions so in our uh, this project we are using c sharp as the programming language so the project file has dot cs proj extension if you use the visual basic as the programming language then the project the project file extension is dot vb proj so if you have worked with the previous version sp.net then this file might be very similar with you but the format and the content that is included in this file has changed significantly in sp.net core if you compare with the sp.net and with sp.net core okay all right guys so here what i'll show you is uh, next point is uh, that is dotnet framework and dotnet core abbreviation so here uh, before that guys i'll show you for the different sections of the sp.net core project file okay so if you click on right click on it and edit this cs project it will open this content in front of you and there is various sections that is target framework so as the name implies this element is used to specify the target framework for your application that is the set of apis that you could like to make available to the application to specify a target framework we use something called target framework moniker or tfm as you can see in the example our application targets one framework that is net core app 2.2 okay and uh, net core app 2.2 is the moniker of dotnet core 2.2 when we created this application we selected dotnet core 2.2 as the target framework from the new project dialog drop down list so i have a chart dotnet core framework and dotnet core abbreviation so name abbreviation and target framework moniker so for dotnet framework abbreviation is net and for dot and framework 4.5 the tfm is net 4.5.1 and for dot and framework 4.7.2 the tfm is net 4.7.2 same way for dot net core abbreviation is net core app and for dot net core 1.0 the tfm is net core app 1.0 and for dot net core 2.2 the tfm is net core app 2.2 same way for three and uh, other and uh, more versions for dot and core okay so that's all about target framework next section is sp dot sp net core hosting model so this element specifies how the sp dot net core application should be hosted and should it be hosted in process or out of process all right and the value of in process specifies that we want to use in process hosting model that is host our sp.net core app inside the inside of the iis worker process that is we can say it as w3wp.exe 
the value of auto process specifies that we want to use auto process hosting model that is forward web request to a backend sp.net core app running the kestrel server so we can discuss this in process and auto process hosting in details in our uh, next videos and under item group there is one more section package reference as the name implies this element is used to include a reference to all the NuGet packages that are installed for your application at the moment in the project file we have two following two NuGet packages all right if you select here and expand this we have two here that is one is microsoft.sp.net core dot app and microsoft.sp.net core dot razor dot design so first package is microsoft.sp.net core dot app so this new get package is called meta package a meta package has no content of its own but it is a list of dependencies other packages so you can find this meta package in the solution explorer under new get which is in turn under dependencies when you expand this meta package you can find all the dependencies here all right you can see all the dependency under this meta package okay now all the features of sp.net core uh, 2.1 and later and S and entity framework core 2.1 and later are included in this microsoft.sp.net core dot app package the default project template targeting sp.net SP core 2.1 and later use this package and uh, you can see notice one thing here that uh, there is no version number on the meta package okay uh, so when the version is not specified in the implicit version is specified by the uh, you can see meta package has no versions here right so when the version not specified an implicit version is speci uh, specified by the SDK so the dotnet core team recommends relying on the implicit version specified by the SDK and not expli expli explicitly setting the version number of the package reference and uh, if this not entirely clear at this moment we will discuss this meta package and implicit version in detail in my next video all right so next package is microsoft.sp.net core.razor.design it has the version is in, uh, specified 2.2.0 okay this package contains mspl support for razor and and is referenced by uh, microsoft.sp.net core.app meta package okay so that's all about the sections of uh, sp.net core project file the so same way using new get package there is one more is SDK and there is the SDK two uh, things there microsoft.sminet core.app and microsoft.net core.app if you expand this you can get all the dependencies and uh, same way it has some own dependencies as well okay and analyzers and there's a different analyzers is is microsoft.sp.net core.mbc.analyzers core analysis analyzers core analysis.sharp and for entity framework microsoft.entity framework.core.analyzers if you expand this this is all the reference files dependencies for this this is the dependencies and for c sharp analyzers these are the dependencies you can see okay that is some uh, you can get all these things uh, type of uh, analyzers and it has the entity framework core it, it has some uh, uh, dependencies here or it's reference if you expand this okay this is all about analyzers so dependencies under dependency will get analyzers new get and SDK and here is properties in under property section if you there is one json file launch setting dot json so this launch setting dot json as a we are in, uh, using as a development the environment is select here as development here 
if it is staging in our your production it will be change our production or staging okay and this is the application url when you run your application it will be localhost as 50986 okay and uh, for user management this is the project and this is application url and this is the environment here okay uh, in if you run the application as a uh, iis express this is the localhost url and if you launch using browser the local host will be 5000 okay and this is a uh, launch setting json it will contain some kind of your uh, launch related information uh, or and it contains the environment where you you know you need to run your application so there is three sections ias settings windows and anonymous authentication is express application url and for profiles this uh, is express and the uh, environment is development and for user management this is the application url and uh, sp.core environment is development so let's run my application we need to check what is the url we'll get here so guys see this is the output of my dotnet core application and hello world dotnet core by satya prakash so this text is configured in uh, if you click on startup.cs we are mention our this message in the content context dot respond dot write async method right and uh, if you notice this url so this url is configured in our launch setting dot json right uh, that is nothing but uh, this url uh, localhost colon 50986 so this is the url we are getting when you run our application all right so uh, in localhost this section is executing and it is showing the localhost colon 50986 so this is the url we are getting so we already have known about where this uh, message is configured that is in uh, startup.cs and this url is coming from launch setting just json under ia settings section so we have this url is configured here Light. and uh, no we need to check uh, whether we modify this url or not this uh, port number so let's check here so by default it was in uh, 50986 so we need to change it as uh, to uh, that is i need to check here uh, 56782 let's save these changes okay and build our solution so build is succeeded and we need to run our application here so guys you can see uh, after changing our port number in launch center launch setting json we can successfully get the same port number after up running our application that is five se five six seven eight two okay so in this way we can uh, configure manually our launch setting json as per the requirements okay uh, we need to undo the changes okay so guys this is a uh, about launch setting dot json uh, file and it, it uses in dotnet core project so guys that's it for today thank you for listening and have a great day thank you so much